The last time Walter Mondale visited Norway, he was a senator, traveling commercial airlines, lugging his own baggage, standing in line with everyone else. This time around, it was different. Mondale is vice president. Where he goes, his staff goes, the Secret Service goes, and the news media goes. Even when going means a four and a half hour boat ride all the way to the end of the Fjordland Fjord and the tiny town Mondale's great grandparents left in 1856, Mundal, Norway. The boat had barely left the dock in Bergen when Mondale took a stroll, introducing himself to Norwegian reporters and making sure the Minnesota reporters didn't underplay the importance of the trip. Did you get uh, Johnny Apple up close for the New York Times? Just home right and get, get some of that. They, can't, they won't believe this in Minneapolis. Just get him right up. And back home, they might not believe that there were 39 reporters and photographers, Norwegian and American, stumbling over each other to record every public moment of Mondale's vacation. Mr. Mondale, for Norwegian television, may I ask you to express your feelings now, sort of seeking back to your roots? But to come back and actually see it and to try to visualize what my great-grandfather went through and why, and to see, meet relatives and to see the beauty of this place, it's, it's, it's not... I can't describe it. It's a thrilling experience. I'm delighted to be back. Thank you. And also delighted to be heading inside. <laughs> <laughs> as nice as this. Mundal is a town with two stores, two hotels, one school, one church, and just enough people to make a crowd on the town pier. In America, the Mundal name became Mondale, and Mondale became vice president. <laughs> Norwegians are not given to wild cheering and applause. They never interrupt a political speech with clapping, rarely applaud when it's over. So the greeting on the pier, low-key by American standards, was pretty flashy for Mundal. And Mondale was obviously delighted. I don't know many of you, but all of your faces look familiar. The Mondales walked from the pier to the Hotel Mundal, the vice president introducing himself along the way to anyone who was interested, and most were. No press going in. No, no press going up the steps. No. no press going up the steps. Okay. Waiting on the hotel porch was the woman who introduced Mondale to his Norwegian relatives four years ago. And one of her granddaughters who had dressed up very special for the vice president. In all, it was a special day in Mundal. It's uh, <laughs> so many people. We are not used to so much publicity, you know. We are not used to that. It's a quiet, quiet and calm place, this. Do you think this is going to change Mondal at all, this visit? No, but I think it will give Mondal a lot of publicity, and uh, perhaps many tourists will come here later on. Stand up, stand up. 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 Stand up.
Mundahl's number one tourist, number one priority Saturday morning was fishing. Mondale and his nine-year-old fishing companion, Mikkel Orheim, were not about to let a little rain and fog stop them. The weather didn't stop the news media either. They tagged along on a press boat for what was billed as a photo opportunity, and they were not disappointed. At 9 a.m., Mondale cast out a line. The event was dutifully recorded in English and Norwegian. At 9.10, the press boat turned around and left, leaving the vice president and the fish to themselves. The vice president came back an hour later. The fish? The fish apparently decided to stay in the fjord. Mondale gestured as to the size of the fish he had hooked and explained, as fishermen everywhere explained, that the fish broke the line. What were you using for bait? Uh, well, uh, we weren't using live bait, uh, just little lures, and uh, it seemed to work just as well no matter what we used. What did you uh, well, catch? I caught a very big uh, cod and it got away. <laughs> Maybe. Did you come home it's, it's what we'd call a rock bass in Minnesota. I caught a piece of the rock. <laughs> the last cross-country ski race of the winter attracted 90 skiers and the Vice President of the United States, whose job it was to hand out the trophies. Austrian Mundal has won the race. As it turned out, five of the seven winners were Mundals, and they're all good looking too, observe their American relative. <laughs> The Mundahl School stands on land once farmed by Mondale's great-grandparents, Friedrich and Britta Mundahl. At a reception, Anders Mundahl spoke of the isolation surrounding the town, how those who left when Mondale's family left started their journey by paddling a boat 19 miles down the fjord or hiking across the mountains. Because of the isolation, most of those who live in Mundahl are related. Most of them assume they're related to the Mondales. <laughs> Men av den mundal på ett spårsmål är Är du i släkt med vice president? Tack så mycket. Hilsen till Norge från alla amerikaner. Jag är en av Amerika och GP. 
Super Marty Lacera, Bender Quality. Nor Norman Singer, Yavi Elsker, Nick Yerka Singer also. Mondale told the Norwegians that no American has roots more beautiful than what he found in Mundal, and that the values immigrants carried with them are today the values of America. 121 years ago, my great grandfather and mother, and my grandfather, then a young boy, left for the new land. And what a challenge that must have been. The ocean that carried great fears to them, the new land with a different language about which they knew so little, leaving their friends, their home, their church, every, their farm, everything they knew to go to America. What brave people they must have been. I wonder how many in my generation would have as much courage as they did. The only way Norwegian television could get videotape out of Mundal was to hire a seaplane. They did, and for their trouble, they were able to report exclusively that one of the bathtubs in Mondale's hotel leaked into the living room, in all devoting four and a half minutes to the Mondale story. May I ask you to express your feelings now, sort of seeking back to your roots? Well, they were, they were here in 75, and it, oh, yeah. it was a thrilling and almost indescribable experience. We are co-classy amateurs, uh, however, we think we can show you the sort of folk dances that were done in Norway, and we hope also to teach you some folk dances. Saturday night was not a night for spectators. Mondale, his staff, Secret Service, and reporters, Norwegian and American, were all but dragged onto the dance floor for lessons.
While everyone else was inside getting dressed for Easter Sunday services, Mondale slipped outside for a quick walk in the first sunshine of his vacation. You know, this is, this is important business. To me, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our country has a lot of responsibilities and I think an important mission in this world. And to have friends and to create understanding and to develop uh, countries that will work with you on security problems, on pursuit of crucial problems around the world is very much a part of my job and a very important part of it. And this last three or four days, uh, I not only could come back to a country that uh, my ancestors and be with old friends, they're good people. Kaiser used to sit. Right Where around, was that? Right, well, just right around the corner, there's a little hill, and he would sit on that and watch the uh, glacier because when the, the little pieces break right. off, it rattles down the mountain and makes it a racket. <laughs> of Mundell were proud but not impressed by Mondale's office. Mondale says his great-grandfather Friedrich probably wouldn't have been bowled over by the title either. If the values he had were the same as my father's, he would have been a lot more interested in whether I were honest and uh, decent and had a good family than uh, the high office I held, but he would be proud of that too. Um, yes, I think about it. You know, I think we all wonder about our roots, who preceded us. Um, I never met my grandfather. He was dead before I was born, and of course I never met my great-grandfather. So that's been a part of my life that, um, that I'd like to connect with if I could. And, you know, I've, the last time I was here I walked through the same Seder, the, the, the uh, pastures high up in the mountains that my great-grandmother used to herd cattle and make cheese and butter. And you, you think about that. I wonder what she was thinking about. Why did they leave? And when you look at that beautiful fjord and you say, now how did your great-grandfather and mother and uncle and Grandpa Ole get in that boat and leave? What kind of things uh, attracted them or drove them or both uh, from Norway to the United States? And um, uh, it's, it's, it's an overwhelming feeling. I, I can't describe it well, but you have that feeling. It's, you know, it's so beautiful. How could they, how could they leave it? The Norwegians cut down trees at the glacier so photographers could get better pictures. This is what you want is a big one. <laughs> I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the glacier. I'm not going to spend too much time, but... We thought they would be useful also for the press, perhaps, to have heard a little bit about it. And all the things that my father didn't tell you uh, four years ago, I shall try to tell this time. Thank you. That's the first time I climbed up the night before. The, 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 the Superle Glacier that you see here is actually in two parts. It originally was much bigger. And it was all a point, one point, which goes back a long time, was joined together as one glacier. It was not the first all-out effort to please a glacier tourist. Germany's Kaiser Wilhelm loved a vacation in this area, but he was frustrated that during all of his visits, he never saw ice fall from a glacier, something that happens about every half hour. During one visit, the Kaiser staff was determined that he was not to be disappointed. 
this, this little hill here is called the Kaiser Hill from that time. And he sat here, and all the uh, explosion experts had climbed up the night before, and they rigged themselves up, and um, so at the p range signal, they blasted off, and nothing happened. <laughs> And that, the other people really enjoyed that. Of course, not soon after he had left, which was maybe an hour later after he'd had his lunch, of course, a large piece came off. And so <laughs> it made it all worthwhile. Well. Yes. It is the last night of the visit. This night, Mondale is truly going home. When his family left Mundal, there were five farms, five farm families, and a traditional holiday dinner shared by those five families called a hoopaganga. When Mondale's family left, the four families who stayed bought the fifth farm and continued the hoopaganga. For 123 years, there have been only four families at this dinner. Tonight, the fifth family comes home. Thank you, thank you. We're delighted to be here. Uh, I brought along some pumpkin bread as our contribution to the dinner. The wife of, of the other up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good evening. The neighbor, neighboring oh, wife. Oh, yeah. From yeah. Yeah. We've got yeah. 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 Mr. Mondale, you are now the second vice president in recent years of Norwegian background. Will you be the first president of Norwegian background? Uh, I know the answer to that, but it's classified. <laughs> Thank you. We're delighted. We're delighted to be here. We hope you have enjoyed the voyage. And hope you'll go with us again. And wish you would come back. Yes, thank you. And to all of you, thank you very much.